Would you like to learn how to connect to multiple databases using Microsoft Enterprise Library version 6? Stick around. You can connect to multiple databases using Microsoft Enterprise Library version 6. The trick is you got to use you got to configure the connection strings in your config file. I have uh, a series of videos called Cre uh, Creating Complex Visual Studio Solutions, and the configuration file for Enterprise Library is uh, located in the presentation layer. Okay, so in this example, I'll have just a simple application called Simple Connection, and there will be a corresponding configuration file called simpleconnection.exe.config. Now, I'll be running that simple connection application in Windows 10. And it depends, that application depends on a library called Microsoft.Practices Enterprise Library.Data. And that's the data application block. So uh, I will configure two connection strings. One connection string will go to a, uh, starting from the top, a Windows Server 2016 instance. And both of these uh, database servers are running on VMs, as well as Windows 10. So one connection string will uh, point to a Windows Server 2016 instance, which I call Vesta, uh, running uh, SQL Server 2019. And that will be a named instance, SQL Server 2019 dev. The other connection string will uh, connect to the employee training database, which I've been using in that series of, visu uh, of uh, videos on how to create complex Visual Studio solutions. So the name of that database is employee training. It's hosted on uh, Windows Server 2008 R2, which I call Apollo. That's the server name. And the database that's running is SQL Server 2008 R2. So this kind of is just an example of how you can use Enterprise Library version 6 to connect to older databases and newer databases. So uh, let's take a look at the code. OK, here I have my database server VMs uh, on display. So this is the Windows 2008 R2 VM, which I call Apollo. And this is the Windows Server 2016 VM, which I call Vista. I can move these out of the way. They're just running the databases. And I don't need those to be showing right now. This is Windows 10, and this is where I'm doing my development. The name of the application is Simple Connection. And I will, uh, uh, there's a link to the repository below. Uh, this, this code can be found on GitHub. Now, uh, one note that I have to mention is, let me make this just a little bit bigger. So this uh, example relies on the simple connection.exe.config. This is the C-sharp source file here, and this is the configuration file. I'll get to that in a second. But this example relies on that configuration file. It also assumes that there exists two Windows Server instances uh, one named Apollo and another named Vesta. Now you don't have to do, you don't have to have two uh, server instances, but if you're going to run this code as is, it's just not going to work, right? Unless you have these two uh, VMs. So what you would have to do is you would have to change the connection strings in the simple connection. And I'll go over that in a second. And you'll know what to do. So you could either connect to a database running locally, or you can connect to a database on another server, like I'm going to show here. You can connect to multiple databases on multiple servers. You just have to configure the connection strings. So let's go over the source code. It's not, uh, it's not complicated. So uh, essentially, it's just a class, simple connection. Because in C-sharp, right, everything has to be in a class. And then the main method starts right off the bat. There's a console.write line, which says uh, connection, connect to, um, it just says connect to employee training database on Apollo server. And then for the, uh, let's start up here at the top. I'm using system.data. I'm using systemdata.common, and I'm using, most importantly, Microsoft Practices Enterprise Library.data. 
there's a whole nother video on how you um, uh, can download the Microsoft Enterprise Library V6 and install those libraries. I think it's in uh, version five or part five of that video series, Creating Complex Visual Studio Solutions. But you wanna make sure that those libraries are installed. And in fact, when I run this, right, or compile it, the, uh, the Microsoft Enterprise Library DLLs are in the same directory as the application itself, just for this simple example. So essentially, uh, the Enterprise Library uh, gives you a database factory Okay, so it's called a database provider factory. So you create a new factory, gives you a, and that's the reference to it. And then you create a database. And you use the factory, call the create method. You just created the factory up here. And you, you can name the database. If you don't name the database, it assumes it's the default database. Now, where am I getting this database name? Uh, I will go over the simple connection uh, config file in a second, but essentially you have, you configure them here. So here is the uh, default database specified there, and then there's the name of the connection string. So when you specify a name, you're specifying which connection string in your config file to actually use to connect to the database. So uh, this creates the database. And then using that database object, right, or that reference to that database object, you then uh, use that to create a command. So the type of that command is db command. And then you use the database object to call the get SQL string command. And here I've just got a simple SQL query that says select table underscore name from information underscore schema dot tables. Uh, so this will execute against the employee training database and just give me a list of tables that's in that database. And then I'm going to create an iDataReader object, use the database to execute the command that I just created using execute reader. And then I'm just going to use a while statement that as long as there's something in that reader, I'm going to uh, uh, iterate over it and get the... Uh, call the reader.getString for each um, entry that comes back, right? So this thing will just go either once or a couple times. But I think it, I don't know if it comes back as one long string. I haven't really dived that deep into it. But uh, this will print out um, on each line, each uh, table that comes back from this query. And then if the reader's not equal null, close the reader. And then I do another console.read line, or write line, I should say, and say I'm connecting to the master database on the Vesta server. And I just changed the names of these references. I could have reused them, but I decided to use different ones. So database provider factory. This code is just a repeat. Uh, I create a new database provider factory, and then I create a new database called database2 in this case using the factory two that I just created above. And then I call out, I, I say, create the Vesta database. Now, the Vesta database is going to a different server. And I'll go over this con config in a second. And then, of course, I just iterate over the schemas of that database. In this case, it'll be the master database uh, in on the Vesta server. Uh, and uh, before I go over the Con the simple connection configuration file. Let's just run this thing. Well, let's compile it first. I'll do a dir, and then I'll. Uh, I have a, actually a compile.bat. Let me open that up because it just makes it easier to compile. So right click Notepad plus plus. So csc. I'm just compiling this from the command line. csc uh, slash r. So that means reference this library and then reference the common DLL. And then uh, star.cs. So anything that's in this uh, directory that has a .cs, which is only one file, compile that using uh, by referencing these external libraries. And so once I, uh, I can just compile it like this. I can say compile. Compile.bat, it'll compile. If there's an error, it will certainly let me know. No errors. And then I can run it. Simple connection. Hit return. 
Oh, okay, that's great. I always love live programming. Okay, so uh, I must have uh, hit the backspace key here. This should be reader two. All right, so I just need to make sure that all these renamed uh, variables are correct, and it looks like they are. So uh, while reader two, reader two, reader two dot close, reader two not equal null. Okay, so save that, and let's compile it. Okay, compiles fine, clear the screen, run it. Simple connection. Okay, so here we've connected to uh, the Vista database server and just to the master database and then called the same command as above, but we only get this listing of files down here. Okay, so let's take a look at the simple connection exe.config. Essentially, uh, the best way to use this stuff is to, you know, copy an existing example, right? So you'll have this to reference up on the uh, uh, GitHub repository. So the first thing you need to do is you have to add a configuration sections tag, okay? And then add a section. The section name, uh, there's essentially three different required parts, right? It's name, type, and require permissions. The name of the configuration section, I named it data configuration. And then that, that then specifies this tag here. So when I say the section name is data configuration, then there's the tag right there. The type is Microsoft Practices Enterprise li Library Data dot configuration database settings. So I just, you know, the best way to find this stuff is just get online, find an example or copy my example and then require permission equals true. Now there is a tool that allows you to create these uh, configuration files, but what I find is best to just start with a template that you've, that you've uh, discovered online or in GitHub someplace, and then add it, modify it. Okay, because I almost guarantee 90, 90, I'd say 98% of your headaches come from trying to get the configuration file to work correctly. So, uh, now, after the data configuration section, where we specify the default database as employee training, and, and again, this example was used in that series of videos creating complex Visual Studio solutions, then uh, add employee name. Okay, so then we have the connection strings, okay? So add is a tag, then the name is employee training, employee training database, that's the name of the connection string and it relates to this default database. Now, the connection string is a little different. So we have the database equals employee training, the server equals Apollo, initial catalog is employee training, the user ID is employee training, the password is just lowercase password, and multiple active result sets equal true. Okay, so that's the connection string for the employee training database. On the Vesta server, it is a name, so this is a default instance. This is server Apollo. So that's the default MSQL server instance. When I installed uh, SQL server 2008R2 on the Apollo uh, server, it's I just selected um, default instance, right? However, on Vista, I just recently installed this, I, I selected named instance and I changed it from the default MS SQL server to SQL server 2019 and then it was the developer edition so I called it dev. The database we want to connect to on this particular server on that named instance is the master. And in this case I'm just going to connect using the system administrator password, username and password so user ID is SA and password equals password. Now, the reason I want to connect to the master database is I don't have any other database created at this point, right? So you can create other databases and you can then create users and logins for those uh, Dune databases and you can play with connecting to multiple databases. Okay, so that is, and then uh, lastly, provider name equals system.data.sql client. And that's, a, that's pretty much it. So you can use um, 
uh, Microsoft's Enterprise Library version 6. Yeah, it's old. It's long in the tooth. But I'm telling you, it still works pretty good. Uh, and I guess, unless there's other anything else to... I think that's about it. So, look, if you have a question, if you want a special video, hit me up at rick at warrenworks.com. Rick at warrenworks.com. And, please, hit the subscribe button. Can't ask you enough. Hit the subscribe button. Click the bell. Hit the subscribe. Tell your grandma. Hit the subscribe button. Tell your wife. Hit the subscribe button. Get to all your friends. Send out an email. Hit them on Twitter. Hit the subscribe button. I need subscribers. And if you have ideas for a special video, like I say, hit me up at rick at pulpfreepress.com. Rick at pulpfreepress.com. Have a good day.